So if we would all please stand. She was patient with me, amen, because God went through with me at the time I was growing up, amen. So getting in trouble, you know, most kids got in trouble for so many other things for just being bad. Only I got in trouble because I would tear things up in the house because I needed supplies. You know, if I felt like the dresser was old, I would take the wood from the dresser and I would build things, amen. You know, I was broke. I had needed supplies. I had to run, but you know, I remember back in the day, you know, when kids was playing, and they, I don't know what's going on today, we had creativity. Yeah. Amen. I remember being us boys, you know, we walk up and down the alley looking for old lawnmowers and, and the old tires and looking for boards and stuff, and we would make go-karts and make whatever it is. You know, y'all remember those days? Amen. When we were creative, amen, we, we had to get, because see, we didn't have... We, didn't, we couldn't go and get all the toys that we wanted all the time, amen? So we had to create our own stuff, amen? Because 
god put that in us that creativity that we were going to survive we were going to find a way to have joy in our life anybody got joy in your life today sometimes things are not the way you want them to be but god will allow you to find some joy somewhere he, I don't care how much you are oppressed. I don't care what situation you're in. God will give you joy in the midst of your struggle. You may not have it all. You may not have achieved it all. But God can give you joy in this life. Do you hear what I'm saying? He'll give you something in you to find something, to find a way to make it. You know, sometimes there are some folks when they poor, they look poor, but I'm so glad that God blessed us that although we didn't have it, we walked around as though we had it. Because there was something in us that said no matter what our situation is, we're going to walk and act as though we belong to God. Do you hear what I'm saying? We're going to dress ourselves up the best we can. We're going to put on the things that we can the best that we have because we have the joy and the peace of God with us because our parents told us we weren't going to go out looking in your kind of way. And there were no excuses for what you didn't have. You weren't going out looking any kind of way. Do you hear what I'm saying? You don't have to have everything. But if you got God on your side, God will give you the wisdom. God will give you that cunningness to take what you have and build it up. Take what you have and make the best of it. Oh, when he was feeding, when they were in the wilderness and he was teaching, all they had was two fish and five loaves. Did I get that right? Yeah, two fish and five loaves. You know. But he took what he had and he blessed it. And he took that and fed 5,000 people. And I know some of y'all grew up in some hard times. And y'all didn't have that much food. But mom and daddy took what they had. And because the blessing of God, they multiplied. And everybody ate. You might not have had steak. You might not have the finest food. But you ate for that day. And God allowed you to make it. Because there is something about what God can do for us. Mm. That just came. And I'm going to let it flow. God is able. He can do above, beyond, and exceeding everything you can even ask or think. God is able. He'll make you and help you find a way. You can find, he'll help you to find, make a way out of no way. Sometimes we think we have to have all kind of money, but God can take what you got. And he, he can help you to multiply. He can give you the wisdom to divide it out. He can give you the wisdom to shell it out however you need to do it. And we all ate. And we all survived. Maybe we didn't like the life we had, but we are here. Do you hear what I'm saying? And I'm so glad. God brought me here today. I can look back over my life and I think things over. And I'm so glad because I can look back and you can wonder how you made it over. How did you make it over to this side? Because there were times you didn't know how you were going to survive. You didn't know how you were going to make it. And there were times in our lives where it was hard, saints. Yes, sir. Can anybody testify in here? There are times in your life it was hard. You thought it was all going to fall apart. But God had a way of keeping it together. God had a way of helping you survive. Some of y'all didn't know where the next meal was coming from, but the next meal came. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because that's how God is. He steps in. Sometimes we make mistakes in life that cause us to experience what we experience. But despite our mistakes, God still is with us. Despite our mistakes, God still is there. He helps us to make a way. God steps into your life and he makes you better. Do you hear what I'm saying? For God so loved the world. He didn't say he just loved the saints. He didn't say he just loved a certain group of people. He said, for God so loved the world. Let me explain to you something to you. You got to realize that your world is bigger than your neighborhood. Your world is bigger than your state. I mean, excuse me, this world is bigger than your state. This world is bigger than this country. Sometimes we act as though America has the rights to God. 
But what about everybody in Africa? But what about everybody in those other countries in the Middle East? What about those in South America? What about those in other continents and other islands? God got people everywhere. And he loves all of them. He said, for, I, for God so loved the whole entire world, not just you, not just America. But God loves everybody. So sometimes you got to take things in perspective when you think, of, think about what you're going through. Think about what somebody else is going through. Pray for somebody else. Because just like God is helping us to make it, God is helping somebody to make it over there. Because Elijah made that mistake, felt like he was alone. And God said, you know what, Elijah, get, get over yourself. He said, I still got 5,000 that ain't bowed to Baal. God always has somebody that serves him. If you don't serve him, he'll find somebody else to serve him. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Come on and clap your hands. Clap your hands for that appetizer. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I glorify you. Lord, I thank you for this word that I'm about to preach to your people today. Lord, I ask that you speak through me. And I trust you, God. I'm a vessel to be used of you. I cannot boast. I am weak, but you are strong. And God, I ask that your strength be in me today as I deliver this word. And I thank you and glorify you in Jesus' name. If he would turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Very familiar passage of scripture. You've heard it over and over again. But there's always a word every time. Amen. How many times you read the scripture, God always has something in it. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 1 through 14. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 through 14. And it reads, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to win, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate a time of war and a time of peace. What profit he, excuse me, what profit hath he that worketh there that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to exercise in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be for ever. And the Lord had a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word. Amen. I'm not sure where God is going to take me with this, but just for a, a text, I put down a time to change. A time to change. Because here in Ecclesiastes, it's, it's a man discussing the things of life. And if you read the chapter 2 before that, he's going through a lot of things. He's going through and evaluating what life is and what the worth of it is. Uh, this is when he's 
talking about vanity. And he discovers that there are so many things in life that are vain that we do. Things that we fight for, that we struggle for, things that we work for. Um, perhaps because this society tells us that we need stuff and we need to gather things and we need things around us. And so we start this game of life of fighting for stuff, uh, fighting to achieve. Uh, when you come out of high school, the first thing you do is either, either try to get an education or go into the workforce. And why do we do that? Because we know in order to gain stuff or to survive in this life, we have to have money. And then we have to gain these things. And sometimes if you want more money, you gotta find the better job. If you want the better job, you some, in some cases need better education, better training, better knowledge, or better experience. Because this is that game that we call life. Because you can't operate in this life without having something, without gaining something. And we know that Solomon had a lot. He was a rich, very rich king because God had given him wisdom to obtain things. And I'm sure there are times in our life when we obtain things and we, and we put a level of success on it. And we think that we've achieved because we've obtained stuff. But Solomon, looking at all his stuff, if you read the chapters before, he said it's all vanity. He started kind of going off within himself because he's a man that is older now and have experienced some things. He has seen different things and different variations of life. He has seen times when he didn't have. He has seen times when he grew up as a son in a palace and now he is now king and now God has given him, his, him wisdom and he has gained things. And sometimes we look at our own life and we evaluate our own life. And sometimes we wonder, what was it all about? What was the whole point of everything that we gained? Because as you get older, you realize that you have and you lose. There's a time for everything. Everything under the sun, there is a time. Amen. And so the writer is saying, I have determined that all of this is vanity. I'm not saying that it's not good. I'm not saying it's totally bad to have stuff. I'm not saying it's totally bad to achieve things in life. But when I count it all up, it's all vanity. Because when you look at the problems that come along in life, when you see how sometimes you can have a whole lot and yet tomorrow it can all be taken away. What was the whole point of working? What was the whole point of suffering? What was the whole point of saving? What was the whole point of doing anything that I've done when decisions of other people and government can just take it all away from me? What's the point of all those years that I worked a job and saved and got a home and then as I older and got sick, then Medicaid wants to take it all away? All vanity, Solomon said. And in one scripture, I was reading the chapter before that, he says, I wonder, because all this stuff I have, when I die, I got to leave it to my son. And I don't even know if my son is going to be wise or a fool. So he's deliberating within himself, is it even worth it all, because he could lose it all. Everything that I've worked for, I can turn it over to him, and he can lose it all. I don't know if he's going to be wise with it or a fool. And how many of you? have things that you wonder what your children are going to do when you leave here. And you might say to yourself, well, I should just spend it all and give it away because and some of y'all know y'all children. Some of y'all know they are a fool. And you don't know if you trust them with your stuff. You don't know if you're going to trust them with your house. They might tear it all up. And everything that you've worked for will be for nothing. Because you came here with nothing, and you're going to leave here with nothing. None of this stuff we toil over, none of this stuff we fight over, we can't take none of it with us. It's only for our present day enjoyment. It's only for a season. It's only for a day. It's only for a week. It's amazing how life is because you can, have, you can be enjoying a good dinner today. I mean, it's good. 
You oh. put your time into it. You put your foot into it, as they say. You done cooked it. You done seasoned it just right. And then you done sat down. You done ate it just for that time it takes you to eat, whether it's 20 minutes or however long it takes you to eat, that you enjoy that dish that you cooked. And then after so many hours, it all goes into the toilet. Things only last for a time. All things only last for a season. And only for a moment. And we get all worked up only for a moment. We get all worked up only for a season. We get all uptight about things that are going bad. And what you must understand is that bad even has a season. Hard times have a season. So don't get all worked up over your troubles because troubles don't last always. Don't get all worked up over anything good or bad because it all only lasts for a season. Do you hear what I'm saying? It only lasts for a season. He said there's a time and a purpose for everything under the sun. But now I can say that there's a purpose for everything you do because you need the food for energy. And you know, if, uh, you know if, if it's really just about energy, food don't have to be good. It can be nasty and do its job. But you want it good going down, right? You don't care how it comes out. You just want it good going down. So once you get to a point where Solomon got, and he realized there's a time and a place for everything, and there is a season. And he says there's a time that we are born. We live life however long that will be. And then we die. And everything that we work for, everything that we are, means nothing except what you did for Christ. Because only what you do for Christ will last. The Bible says, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. It says, for their works do follow. So the point, I guess, what maybe I'm getting at is learn how to evaluate what is valuable to you. Because although we have stuff that is valuable, but you have a soul that is valuable. And when you leave here, that's the one thing that matters is the state of your soul. Because only what you do for Christ, that will he judge. He's not judging what type of house you got, how big your house was, how small your house was, how much money you made, what position you held in your job, all the stuff that you gained, all the shoes in your closet. He don't care nothing about that. He wants to know what did you do for me? What did you do in this life that spreads the word of God? What did you do in this life that matters to God? Now, it's not that God don't care that we need stuff because we see in the scriptures where he can bless us with stuff. But you have to know and put a value on things. You got to take time to evaluate what's actually important and what's not. You got to take time to tear out all of those things because it says a time to rend. There's a time to throw away stones. And there's a time to collect. But there's a time in your life when you got to basically learn how to throw some stuff away. Yeah. And separate some stuff because that's what it's all about. When you ran or sow, when you gather stones or throw stones away, it's about making a decision of what's even valuable anymore. Sometimes we go through our closets and we got clothes from a long time ago. And you make an evaluation, I'm not going to wear this anymore. No, can't fit it. And you know we have those Target clothes. I don't mean like from the store Target. Those clothes we Target to get our weight down to get back in. Uh, that being said, where is it at here? I'm trying to find it. Yeah, maybe it is time to cast away stone. Time to ran. Maybe I can't. There was something else I saw here. I was going to link to that, but I'll get back to it later. 
those clothes that you claim that you are going to get back in. There are times when it's time to just give it up. If you ain't done it by now, you ain't going to do it. And in fact, it took you so long, it don't matter if you fit it because it's out of style now. Now, it'd be different if it, you know you did it within the season that it was in. But if, you, if it's done past the season, baby, it's time to get rid of it. There are just some things we ain't going back to. You know why? Because life changes. Things that you held on to, life won't allow you to hold on to that thing anymore. Because your mind changes, your thought process changes. What was important to you at one point in your life is no longer important. Pause for a minute. Is the air off? <laughs> oh. But there are just times you have to realize that life does change. And we change. And sometimes we need a change in our life. Sometimes we have to do like Solomon and evaluate where our life is and where it's going. Is anything that you're doing, is it working for you? And if it's not working for you, it's time to get rid of it. That's the whole point of why he was stating all of these things. You have to make a decision because there's a time to do everything. He said there's a time to love and there's a time to hate. Now, it's not understanding the language of the Bible. You have to translate some things. What he means is there's a time for intimacy. And there's a time to leave intimacy out of the picture. There's a time to be time to love, it means being intimate, and there's a time to hate, a time where you gotta let go of intimacy because you can't always be hugged up on one another all the time, right? You can't it can't always be about your needs for one another all the time because that's the way life is. That's what he's saying. He's not condoning that you hate someone. You hear what I'm saying? He's just saying there's a time to be intimate and there's a time to separate for a little while. Sometimes you need time for yourself, woman. Sometimes, man, you need time for yourself. But then there's a time to come together. So it's all about an evaluation of how you spend your time and when it's time to get rid of some things and when it's time to hold on to some things. There's a time to tear some stuff apart. That time to rend. There are just some people you got to get out of your life. There are just some situations you got to get out of your life. There are just some things that remind you that you keep going back to that it's time to let go. There are some things it's time to just get over. Say with me, get over it. Get over it. The past is a past. You can't come back and change it. Whatever happened, happened. Get over it. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's a time to get over it. But it also says there's a time to sow. There's a time to mend some things back together. And some of us, it takes us getting rid of things in order to fix another thing. Because God can't move forward with you unless, until you let go of something else. Let go of the guilt of your past. You did what you did, but I thank God he is able to forgive. I thank God he is able to bring us to another place, another level of peace, to where you can realize, yeah, I did what I did, I made my mistakes, but what am I going to do today? What am I going to do from this point forward? Because I can't change the past. So I got to rip that, I got to rent that, I got to throw those stones out. Mother Janet and I got to go collect some more stones. Because God got something better for you. But he can't give it to you if you got too much stuff, too much junk that you're hanging on to. This is what creates hoarders because hoarders are always trying to keep stuff. And they gain new stuff and never get rid of old stuff. And so the house becomes overwhelmed with stuff. But God is telling y'all here today, it's time to get rid of some stuff. It's time to evaluate your life. It's time to look it over and think things over. It's time to find out what's worth it and what's not. You ought to get to a time where you just say, you know what? I don't care. I'm moving forward. I don't care what they said to me. I'm moving forward. I don't care what they think about me. I'm moving forward because I mean, people can think what they want to think about you. You know, we spend most of our time trying to please folks. I don't know what it is why we feel as though we have to make other people happy. And, and sometimes we try our best to make them happy in one thing, and they're still disappointed in us in something else. 
and you spend your time toiling in life trying to make other folks happy. But you got to realize within yourself, you got to be happy with yourself. You got to realize you don't have enough of yourself for everybody else. Everybody got to figure things out for themselves. You ain't happy with me? Oh, well, I'm happy with me. Go figure it out. Find your own happiness. Because I'm trying to try to make you happy. I'm trying to try to satisfy you. I'm trying to try to, try to act for you. Because I only got time for me. I'm trying to get myself together. I'm trying to get myself right. And I ain't got time for your mess. I ain't got time for your junk. I ain't got time for you wasting my time. Isn't it funny how there's some people that will call you and spend the whole conversation talking about themselves and you can't even get your stuff in? And you sitting there rolling your eyes. You done paused your show and your show and paused for the last hour because you thought you could go back to it, but they, they talking so much. Sometimes you got to make up your mind to hang up. It's like, well, baby, I'm sorry for your troubles, but, you know, I got to move on. So bye. Click. I ain't got time for that. I don't have an answer for you. Because the last time I gave you advice, you didn't listen. So there's nothing I can do now. Because if people want to accept wisdom, and they still want to be a fool, you ain't got time for them no more. There's nothing else you can tell a fool until they learn how to stop being a fool. And every time they do foolish things, they want you to try to solve it. They want you to listen to their problems. It's like, well, baby, honey, bro, I'm sorry, but that was, that's your issue, go deal with it. What you calling me about all your kids for? You had them, go deal with it. I done raised mine. It's sad I have never seen so many grandmothers raising their children's kids because the parents are foolish. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Now, I don't have kids of my own, so sometimes I feel awkward talking about kids, but I, I mean, I can observe things, right? And I see what's happening. And I know sometimes because for the sake of the grandkids, you don't want them to suffer. But sometimes foolish people cause suffering. But you got to save your own peace of mind. Amen. You got to read that. Because you know what? Because until they fix themselves, you can't fix that. You might be able to stop small amounts of tragedies happening to, you, happening to your grandchildren. But you can't stop everything. Some things they just gonna have to experience and learn from on their own. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? You have to spend time for yourself. You gotta realize I am working for myself because all of the rest of it is vanity. Y'all fight and toiling over all of this stuff, wasting my time. And when you leave here, you ain't gonna take none of that with you. You calling me fussing about your boyfriend, but if you die today, he gonna move on to another woman. So why are you worried about it? You knew he was a cheat when you got with him. Are you surprised? He cheating on me. You knew he was a cheater. There's a time to keep silent and a time to speak. And you have to learn and evaluate within yourself when it's time to be quiet. Because you can talk yourself into a problem. You can let your mouth get you into trouble. Sometimes it's just time to be quiet. Because you know yourself better than anybody else. You know if you make a comment, you know if you get into this conversation, it's going to turn into something ugly. 
And if you know yourself, then you should have enough wisdom to say, you know what, I'm going to just be quiet. Because it's going to turn into something whole different if I don't shut up. There are some things that your words out of your mouth just can't fix. You can spend all your energy arguing. You can spend all of your energy telling them all. You can spend all of your energy trying to give them the wisdom, trying to give them the answer. But if they foolish, fools can't understand wisdom. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because a fool will take wisdom and trash it. Because if they don't know what to do with the information that you give them, all of what you said was in vain. Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. So it's better for you to save your peace and keep your peace and just be silent. Amen. And move on. Yes. But he said there is a time to talk. And what it's for is not for other people. But when it's time to speak up for yourself, it's time to speak. Somebody trying to tell you you ain't no good, it's time to speak. Somebody trying to tell you you can't do it, it's time to speak. Someone telling you you can't succeed, it's time to speak. Somebody telling you you're going to fail, you, you might as well just give up. You ain't no God, you don't believe in God, it ain't going to work. What you're praying for, it ain't going to work. You're going to die, it's time to speak. Speaking is for ourselves. Speaking is for to speak those things that are not as though they were. Speaking is telling the devil to flee. Speaking and saying, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Speaking and saying, whose report shall I believe? I am going to believe the report of the Lord. For everybody else, it's time to be silent. But for you, it's time to speak up. Because if you don't, people will walk all over you. And I ain't got time to be walked on. Because I got things in this life I need to do. I got stuff I need to do and I ain't got time for people to try to walk over me, to try to use me, try to abuse me, try to take advantage of me. And so I'm speaking. I'm saying what I got to say. And when it's said, it's said. They can either accept it or they don't. Because I don't know about you, but I got my own peace. I got my own stuff I'm trying to do. And I don't have time for other people's stuff. Time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. There's a time to fight, but there's a time to fight for what's yours. Not a time to fight because of hate, not a time to fight because you just want to go to war, but there's a time to fight for the values that you uphold. There's a time to fight for your standards. You know what you believe. You know what you stand for, and it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. You have a standard that you want to live by. And it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. I know sometimes we look at this generation and we can't stand it. We can't stand the things they choose to wear. We can't stand the things they choose to do. We can't stand the attitude that they have. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to fight not against them, but I'm going to go to war to say, look, I am going to stand on my standard. You can do whatever it is you want to do. I am going to stand on what I believe and what I know to be true. How I present myself to the world is my standard. How you choose to dress and present yourself is your standard. You want to be foolish, be a fool, but I am going to fight to keep my standards. And church, I'm telling you, it's time for us to go to spiritual warfare because there is a fight for moral standards. And this is what we this is what we do here today. This is the sanctuary. There will always be a sanctuary, not a dance hall, not a bingo hall, not for you to be selling and buying, but it is the sanctuary. It is the sacred place of God. This is where we come to worship, and that's what God decided for. And we will fight for God's holiness. We will fight 
for his sanctuary. We're going to fight for his values and for his standards. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to fight for the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I got my sword and I got my shield. I got my helmet of salvation. I got my breastplate of righteousness. And my feet are shod with the gospel of peace. I don't know about you, but it's time for war. Hold on to your standards. Hold on to your values. Now, I understand sometimes we do need to change how we do some things, but there is a foundation that will not change. Yeah. And I choose to fight for that foundation. There is a foundation of prayer. There is a foundation of faith. There is a foundation of the way we carry ourselves. Now listen to me here. Listen to me. You got to make up in your mind what your own standard is. It can't be my standard. It can't be the person next to you standard. But you got to have a standard. Fads change, clothes change. And, and I'm not here to say what's wrong to wear or not. But you know within yourself what your standard is. Some, sometimes your standard is connected to your age. There are just some things that at a certain age you need to stop wearing. Because you got to understand your season. There's a time and a place and then there's a season for everything. When you were 25, 25 years old, that was your season to do what you did in that season. But now that you're 55, it's time for another season. And it's sad when you see 65-year-olds still trying to pimp, still trying to dress a certain way. It's time to let pimp go. And it's time to be that wise man that teach the young men how to be men. Because how the Bible says you have to lead by precept and example. And you cannot give them example if you look just like them. If you dress just like them. You got to show them what it means to grow up. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? So there are just some things you got to leave behind. And that's what the, that's what all of this is for. It's about knowing when to do what. When to get rid of some stuff and when to hold on to some stuff. How to determine what's a time, what's the right time for things. Because ultimately what the writer is saying, I'm trying to fix all this stuff. I'm trying to determine all this stuff because all of it is vanity. Because when I leave here, what happens after I'm gone, I don't care. All I care about is what my standards were. All I care about is hearing him saying, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's all I care about. Now, I care about things in this life, but I'm going to enjoy them for my season. I'm going to enjoy what God has for me in this life, in my season. But when it's our season to pass on to that other world, all that stuff is gone. That season is gone. And you have to learn how to live in your season. I'm here to tell you, you know, I heard um, someone say this, that I feel like it was Jakes. He said, he made a statement. He said, if you want to be forever 21, he said, that means you got to die at 21. Because that's not life. You age, you change. We get older. I know sometimes we all wish we could be younger. But if you don't get older, that means you're not here. Amen. So it's a blessing to be the age that you are. <laughs> don't see it as a curse, but see it as a blessing. Because you made it, and others didn't make it. It's a blessing to be the age that you are. And it's okay if you want to be 20, then just say, hey, 65 is a new 20. <laughs> because just because your body is old don't mean your mind got to be shut down. Don't mean you got to stop enjoying yourself. Don't mean you got to stop enjoying life. You just got to enjoy it a little different way. I mean, you know, you can't, you can't jump on a trampoline, but you, you, know, you can do some other stuff. You just got to enjoy it until, according to what your body can do. 
but enjoy it. Because we used to run in and we enjoy running. But now we got a tip in, and I'm gonna enjoy tipping. <laughs> and I ain't quite there yet. But I know I can't run like I did when I played football. <laughs> so whatever state I am, whatever season I am, I'm gonna learn how to enjoy it. Because there was a time and a place for everything. You gotta evaluate and examine your life. There's one scripture that says, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider what you need to change. Because there are some things that won't change in your life until you change your mind. Sometimes there are financial blessings that won't come your way until you change how you spend your money. Sometimes cleanliness won't come unless you learn and evaluate how you clean and how you keep things. This is all about life. This is all about how we govern our life. You have to, the Bible says, it's talking about communion, but it says, let a man examine himself. Do you hear what I'm saying? There are just some things in life that are just futile. All things change. But it doesn't matter what you achieve or what you have. It does not matter if God is not in it. But I'm here to tell you to let God be in whatever you do. Let God be your peace. Let God be your joy. Let God be the joy and the peace of your life. You gotta ask for the wisdom from God. God help me to change. God help me to see where I am in my life. God help me to turn some things around. God help me to let some stuff go. God help me to keep silent when I need to keep silent. God help me to fight when I need to fight. God, I need you to help me to make it. I need you to help me to see you. I need you to help me to see your peace and to see your joy. Because I'm trying to make it to heaven. I'm trying to make it. I want you to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I realize that all this stuff don't even matter anymore. But what matters is my peace with you. I want to see God in peace. I don't know about you. I don't care about all the things of life. I'm going to live life. I'm going to do it. what I do and I'm going to enjoy what life has to offer. But my main thing is I want him to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Anybody want to hear him say, well done? Hallelujah. 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 I want God to help me to make it. I want him to help me to make it over. I want him to see me through all of my troubles, all of my problems. Many are the afflictions, but I know that you are able to bring me out of all of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, I'm done. Come on and stand to your feet. I think y'all got the point. I think we got the message. Because y'all ready to get some air. I don't want to preach that we all passed out of it here, all right? But I want you to think about right now. I want you to think about the scripture. Go home and read it. I want you to think about, evaluate your life, evaluate what's important. Evaluate what is holding you back and what's keeping you in turmoil. There are some things you need to let go of. Some stuff you got to stop fighting. Some stuff you got to keep silent about. And ask God to to help you to see what you need to be. What, what is it that God wants you to do? First of all, you got to evaluate, am I saved? Is there anybody in here today that are not saved that want to be saved today? Because none of this life matters if you don't have God with it. It don't work without God. Do you hear what I'm saying? The writer says, all vanity if God's peace is not in it. If there's any that desire prayer, then raise your hand right where you are. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify you, Lord. We thank you for this word. Lord, we thank you because you have given us insight on life and what's important. And you have given us insight that there are seasons in our life. Lord, those that have raised their hands, Lord, they have a desire. Lord, they have a petition before you, God. And we ask that you step in with your mighty hand, with your divine ability, whether it's healing, whether it's a way being made, whether it's something they need turned around, oh God. We ask that you step in right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are able, God. In the name of Jesus, you are able to heal, to deliver, to set free. And for those that have raised their hands, God, we ask that you do whatever it is that they desire.
desire, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we know that you are able, God. And we thank you. We glorify you in this place. Amen. I'm going to ask that you prepare yourself. Give God a hand praise. church. Amen. Let's continue to be present. Amen. If you don't, uh, if you think about what you want to give, you can always still give. You can cash and have them give them by. Amen. We just thank you for all things and we just thank God for his blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we glorify you and we magnify your name. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this blessed word. Lord, we thank you for this communion service, oh God. Lord, let us go in peace. Lord, as it be found doing your will, 
Lord, watch over us and protect us from danger seen and unseen. We know that school is starting, God. We ask that you protect our children, protect our teachers, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke you with the attack against our children and our facility and our uh, teachers, oh God. The faculty, God. In the name of Jesus, let there be peace in the schools. Let there be covering over our children, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to take us from this place, but never from your presence. And let us return at the appointed hour. Let us all say, Amen.